All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I wanted to give an update on prices and trends in the market that I have seen for Xbox 360. Now, for those of you that are unaware, at the end of July, on July 29th, the Xbox Live Marketplace will cease to stop supporting downloading Xbox 360 games, Xbox Live Arcade games, DLC, add-ons, stuff like that. And I made a video, some of you may recall, about seven months ago. It wasn't like some kind of Nostradamus moment or anything. It was just essentially just me giving a sort of like, hey guys, you may want to know about this. This is what I think is going to happen to prices of 360 games. I just gave a general overview on my thoughts on what's going to happen to prices, why they're going to go up, and why games that have absolutely no tie to the Xbox Live marketplace whatsoever, why I thought those games would also be going up in price. And sure enough, that time is now here. I told people you had, you know, a good amount of time to pick up games, no need to panic, but it, it may be time to stop procrastinating. I myself, I've been procrastinating. I still got a lot of 360 games to pick up myself before it's too late. But in today's video, I'm going to go over and show you a bunch of examples of games that are both low in price and seeing an increase and games that were sort of high in price and have seen a meteoric increase. And in some instances, games that were cheap and have still seen a huge price increase. And why I think this has happened to certain games and not others and why some have seen bigger price increases. Do I think these prices will hold in the future? Do you need to buy them now or is it going to be too late to buy them if you wait? So don't worry, I got you covered here. Um, hopefully a lot of you took my advice back seven months ago when I told you to, hey, start looking at 360 games because the time has come. People are starting to stock up and prices are rising. So to start us off here, I'm going to start with an example of a game that a lot of people probably already own. It's usually one of my number one examples. When I tell people if you want to see if and when the Xbox 360 is increasing in price, you got to keep an eye on the, the RPGs that are on the 360 because there's not a lot of them. And RPGs are typically the games that go up in price first before other genres, no matter what the console is. So if you look, I made that video in September. That was right around when a complete box copy of Lost Odyssey was going for about $20 $22. And in that time, it actually fell to about $18. But now you can see as of February, April, February, March, on average, it's hitting about $30. Now, that may not seem like a lot. It's like, okay, $8 to $10. But you got to remember, a game going from $20 to $30 is actually pretty substantial. And if you look, even games like Eternal Sonata, which around when I made my video were $13, have seen the highest price in the history of the game which is now over $20, $22. That's huge. That's almost doubling the price of this game in the span of half a year. And this is why we need to be paying attention to Xbox 360 prices right now. And it's why I've been warning people. If you've been coming to my streams, I do my eBay streams, I always tell people like, hey, don't sleep on these too long. Pick up the 360 RPGs that you want and other 360 games because the time is coming. People are starting to panic buy. Not so much... At this point, it's not panic buying. It's more of they have that fear of missing out because they don't want to wait too long. And then what happened with the PS3 happens with the 360 where games get so expensive that they just kind of wish that they bought them before and now it's a little too late. I went over a lot of this in my previous video. I will actually link to that video at the end of this one. So if you want, I'm not going to cover too many of the points of comparison when it comes to what happened to PS3 prices and how I think that's going to vary and differ from 360. So check that video out when I'm done with this one. But... At the end of the day, I think the 360 will be even worse because this one is, this is set in stone. In a nutshell, the PS3 said, hey, we're closing our online shop, and then it didn't happen, so prices had a chance to kind of fall back down. The 360, like, this is, this is it. This, people know that this is the end of the line. There's no, like, bait and switch with this one. Um, 360 games also have the benefit of being backwards compatible, so there's a lot of use with a lot of these games with current generation consoles as well. So let's just go through some of these pretty quickly here just to show you what I'm talking about. Now, you may look at this and be like, okay, I don't see too much of a change here, but if you look, uh, Infinite Undiscovery has kind of always been up and down. It's always been a very cheap game, but as you can see, January it was 12 bucks. It's now the highest it's ever been. Infinite Undiscovery going for an average of almost $20 is a big deal. That is almost an $8 price increase on a game that used to be $12. Now, it's important to show the cheaper games as well. I don't want to just show all the really high price games because these are great examples to show you guys that, yes, even cheaper games 
can go up in price. And if you planned on picking up a dozen or two dozen of the cheaper 360 games in that sort of like $20 price range, if all of those $20 games are increasing from $20 to $30 and beyond, that's going to add up pretty quickly and you can save yourself a lot of money. You got to remember the purpose of these videos is more so educational. I'm not here to instill fear in you guys to go out and buy these games, uh, you know, all in one day. This is just to educate you that, hey, do your research, look up what these games are going for, you know, kind of pinpoint the ones that you want and maybe try and pick them up before it's too late. I just want you guys to save money, right? Like we're collectors. A lot of us want to own physical games, right? So we want to be able to have these games on a physical disc, not have to worry about downloading them and being able to save money, picking up these physical copies is always a good thing. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just here to kind of give you guys updates on things that you may not realize is going on with the 360. And here's a great example. Now you might be looking at my thumbnail and you're probably like, oh wow, what a clickbait thumbnail. Pete said Cold Sept Saga is $200. Well, guess what? This is why you got to do outside research and your own research because sometimes even price charting is behind and not up to date. Historically, this game has always been in that $35 range. And as you can see, even it's saying April, this game is $50, but I'm here to tell you, no. Uh, unfortunately for some games, you kind of miss the boat. If you didn't pick up games like Cold Sept Saga, I think it's a little too late. As you can see, these are some of the more recent sales for Cold Sept Saga. Now, prices do range anywhere from, if somebody looks on price charting and says, oh, this game's $50, they may sell it for $50.75, right? But then a day later, somebody buys it for $200, $150. And there are multiple sales. Prices are all over the place, but that's because the market is confused right now. People look at price charting. They're not potentially doing as much research as they should. They see people selling copies at price charting copies or around there. And then they see, sell, see people selling copies for $200. So they try and do like an in-between at like $150, $120. But just to show you that, hey, sometimes you got to check eBay for prices because games like Cold Sep Saga are triple or quadruple what they're telling you they are going for. So unfortunately, games like Cold Sip Saga, it's a little late. And this is just a great example to show you, like, don't wait until this happens to other games, right? So any of those kind of games where, let me just show you what, what I mean by this. If you come on here and you look at what is currently available, there are only 51 search results. And of course, not all of them are going to be US copies. There's going to be Japanese copies in here as well as US copies, incomplete copies, sealed copies, whatever have you, you need to look and focus on the games where there's maybe 50 or under copies on eBay or 20 or under 30 or under. Look for the games where it seems like the actual availability on the market is drying up. Get those games first. I'm gonna, you know, I'm not gonna give you guys tons of examples here. This is just like a broad kind of idea for you to focus on. I wanna give people a chance to kind of do their own thing, right? look into the games that they want. I'm not going to sit here and highlight 50 games for you that you need to go out and get right now because let's give people a chance to do that on their own before like laser pointing on every game that you should be picking up at this moment. That time will come. I'll probably be doing a stream on my Twitch where we kind of just like go through every th single 360 game in the library and kind of see what the availability is and such. So um, stop by on Saturday nights. So I'll probably be doing that there in the coming months on my Twitch stream. But other than that, uh, just wanted to show you that as an example. Here's another one where prices are completely not up to date. Vortex Senko no Ronde. For so long, as you can see, I, me and my, me myself and other people have always remembered this game. Look at that. It was as low as 380 in 2017. That's not even that long ago. $8. And then it kind of got up into that $10 range. I remember I always used to joke when you see a game like Senko no Ronde reach like 50 plus dollars, you know, the the end of the world is happening for Xbox 360 prices. And as you can see, it's saying it's a $20 game, but guess what? Wartech is now $75 plus dollars. In some instances, it's going for even more. Some people are almost paying $100 shipped for this game. If you're unfamiliar with Wartech is, this is a shoot 'em up fighting game. So it is really unique, but this has always been so widely available. It's just that, guess what? People are, they're going after the games they want. They're going after those weird Japanese games, shoot 'em ups, RPGs. Um, any kind of like Japanese developed games, anything with like an anime setting, anything that is like really different, really unique, especially if it's ex exclusive to the Xbox 360. So you can even see that this game, so people that were not doing their research, it was going for, you know, price charting prices. This is why before you buy anything, make sure that you're checking what something's going for on eBay in addition to price charting. 
This is another great example. This is one of the ones that I've been focusing on now for years. I've been looking at the price of this game because even back in like 2020 and 2019, I always thought it was really surprising that Need for Speed Most Wanted was going for like 30, 35, maybe even $40 because I'm like, wow, this is a launch game. Pretty readily available. It's a game that has quite a bit of copies on the market. It even had a Platinum Hits version. But over time, I've been noticing it's getting higher and higher and higher. And look at this. Right after my video, this game starts, not saying my video did it, but like around October, November, this game starts shooting up into the $60 plus dollar price range. And let's take a look at what's happening to it now. We've got, now this is an extreme example here. Not all copies are selling for this much, but you see one person sell it for $120. Other sellers are going to see that. They're going to start increasing their prices because they're like, well, if that person can get $120. Why can't I? And steadily, you're going to see prices on this start increasing. You can still, if you are very adamant about kind of hunting for deals, you can still probably get this for the $50, $60 price range. $40 if you're super lucky that you're seeing on price charting. But you are going to see prices creeping back up towards a hundred dollars on need for speed most wanted and i would not doubt it within the next month or two you're definitely going to see this no longer be viable for eighty dollars now will this price hold i really think it's a topic for a whole nother video where we can really go into like a, a super deep analysis on will these 360 prices hold in my opinion uh, anything that is backwards compatible with the Series X, that especially if it's exclusive to the Xbox 360 and if it's a beloved game that isn't super duper common, yeah, I think you're going to see these prices hold pretty solid. Look at what happened to consoles like the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. Prices on those games rose dramatically. Do you see little dips and climbs and stuff? Absolutely, but it's not like the expensive games have crashed back down in price. PS3 is a different example because you have seen prices come down on that and uh, that is mostly just because there was a lot of panic it's one of the first times we saw a company announce they're going to close a storefront and then everybody rushes online to buy physical copies so now that people have learned from that experience people have seen how prices adapt um you know over time i think they're, they're going to learn what they need to be going for on 360 and um i do think certain games that you can only get here will probably stay pretty steady in price. This is another example of what I'm talking about here. This is an exclusive, or I can, actually, I can't remember if this was released on the PS3. It may have. I should have actually looked that up beforehand. I apologize. Um, but Blitz the League 2, for the longest time, was about a $50, $60 game. Just in the last couple months, it is now going for over $100. And I did double check this to make sure that this price is accurate. And it is. It is selling for over $100 on eBay. And we're talking about sports games here, but it's a beloved series. People love the Blitz games. Heck, I even I played Blitz the League recently on the PS2. And I have to admit, as someone that doesn't like sports, doesn't like sports games, it was kind of fun. So experiences like this are what you need to really look out for. And it's a pretty uncommon game. This is another pretty extreme example, Darkest of Days, a game that you always used to see in bargain bins and at game stops for next to nothing. And you looked at it and the cover's kind of boring, right? It's just, you know, your typical looking war shooting game, even though this game is a little bit more than that. It's got a kind of unique spin um, where you're taking like futuristic weapon, weaponry, like, weaponry, like back in, the, I think it's like World War one or something something crazy um, but yeah it's it's a pretty cool concept for a game and as you can see prices on this have shot up i haven't played it yet. i still need to play this game luckily i picked this up long ago when i saw prices starting to shoot the heck up so it says it's going for 60 but here's another instance where you want to uh be doing your research right just not even a month ago 90 bucks 90 dollars a hundred dollars that's sealed though $85, some of the more recent prices, this person bought it for $130, sealed, $80, someone got lucky here for $40, $85, $90, right? Like, it's climbing and climbing and climbing. Why? Darkest of Days is exclusive. People want the 360 exclusives. They want the games that are kind of out there, a little bit different in ideas. And this is a game that, while you feel like you saw it a lot, this is actually more on the uncommon side. Now, here's a great example of a game that is super common. You guys remember Anarchy Rain? Like, look how cheap this game has been all these years. $3, $4, $5. Kind of peaking around the $8 price range. And yes, you can still get this game for about $8. But here's something worth noting, right? February 2024, the average price for this complete in box was $7.31. Just a couple months later, it's going for almost $12. Now, <laughs> that may seem insignificant, but this is a great example to show you that even... Even the cheap games are not immune to this. Even games that you feel like are super common and would never be affected by a price increase. Going from 
7 to 12 ish dollars is pretty significant for a game that used to be as cheap as Anarchy Reigns. Osir's Wrath, another one that I always talked about because it's backwards compatible. People love this game. Uh, back in September, October, it was going for about $30, and now we see the price nearing $50. I didn't check. It may even be going for more, but you know, just as another example of a game that just very recently people are really starting to hone in on exclusives, backwards compatible games. Uh, this is another great example. I still need to pick this up myself. You know, I'm kind of like I should have picked up some of these games before I made this video, but I wanted to get this information out there for you guys. That to me is more important. Um, but even games like Afro Samurai for a long time, it's kind of been in that $15, $16, $20 range. It has now gone from $20 upwards to an average of $30. Another example of something in that mid-tier pricing range. I've always said to people, 360 games over the years that have sort of settled in this $20 to $30 range, those are the ones that you need to keep your eyes on because those are still affordable to a lot of people. And uh, that's where a lot of people are going to be focusing, right? A lot of people are not going to look at the bottom of the barrel, the games that are like in the bargain bins for $5. Most people are going to be looking in that like $15, $20, $25 range, and those are the ones that have, in my opinion, the greatest chance of becoming, instead of being $30, they're going to go to $40 to $50 to $60 and beyond, um, because usually the games that reach $70, $80, $100, those are usually kind of out of people's price range, so people kind of tend to look for the games where you know they can pick up a few of them for a reasonable price. We got a handful of more examples here for you guys before we close out. I don't want this video to be too long, but I just want to show you a, a wide array of examples of what I'm trying to illustrate here for you. You have a game like Zoids Assault, actually kind of a rare game. The thing about Zoids, though, it's a very, it's a very specific kind of niche market. There, you got to really be into that micromanagement of Zoids. I remember I tried playing this game around when it first came out, and man, it was hard. I was not super into this. It wasn't really my thing. So I think sometimes stuff like that can keep the price a little bit lower instead of it being a game that appeals to everybody that's in the mech games or uh, Japanese uh, action games and stuff. It's it's definitely a little slow, a little boring. This game has climbed from recently being about $26 to $30 to being almost $40. Once again, another $10 price in increase. Keep an eye on all these games. I'm choosing to show a lot of these games that have this sort of like $10 to $15 price increase because it's just showing you that nothing's safe. Nothing is safe from a price increase. The Simpsons goes from being about $35 to $50, right? Even eBay, I'm sure this copy is going for $60, maybe a little bit more. Um, we, oh, this is, this might be a bit of a, an extreme example here, uh, the one after this, but even games like F1 2014 go from being about $35 since my video to being about $53. And this is the kind of game where you'd look at it and be like, man, that, that, doesn't, that looks like the kind of game you'd find in, in GameStop for 10 bucks. And to kind of end this here, just to show you of how extreme things can go when it comes to being rare, that's why if you see a rare game that you really want to play and it's pretty good, I think this is the one of the best examples to show you what can happen. So this is apparently considered to be one of the rarest, if not like the rarest, non-limited edition Xbox 360 game. Because if you do go on eBay, yeah, there's barely any available. As you can see, for the longest time, this game was like $25, $30. It kind of shows you that people knew this was hard to get. There were always never many available, judging by this price. But, the, you know, there wasn't enough, quite enough demand or attention focused on it. And then in 2022, the game jumps to 80 And then out of nowhere, I actually do not know why this happened. This happened in June, apparently. June to July, it goes from 180 to 187. That feels a little bit like it might have been manipulated in some way. That's just very odd, right? Like, how does the game go from that to that for seemingly, like, there's no hype surrounding this. It's not like the storefront is closing. It's, it's just kind of out of nowhere. Could have been one of those instances where somebody bought up all the copies and then tried to, you know, somebody bought one for a hundred plus dollars and, you know, this is what happens. And then it climbs to 350. I saw a copy on eBay that went for 450. It has come back down to sort of like being about $300, but this just shows you one of the most extreme examples that I can find when it comes to if a game is rare and if someone's like, hey, you know what? I either just want this for my collection because it's rare. Unfortunately, there are people that are like that, but I think in the case of Formula One, there are a lot of Formula One fans out there and they're probably very specific about playing Formula One games. They don't want to just be playing Gran Turismo games. They want to be playing Formula One and they want to get their hands on some of the rarest ones out there. I don't play F1 games, so I, I couldn't exactly tell you what makes this one super appealing for this price. But just an example to show you that when something's rare and there's enough people out there that want it, this is what can happen. So 
I hope you guys found this video informational. If you did like it, be sure to hit the like button. It does help me out a lot. And I will also link right up over top left over here somewhere. I will link the video that I was talking about uh, that I've been referencing from seven months ago, where I kind of go a bit deeper into this, comparing the 360 prices to the PS3 prices. So if you found this video useful, also go check that one out and subscribe for more content like this, because I love putting out these sort of price analytical videos. It's one of the things that I love doing most here on YouTube and in my stream. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.